Australia's Sky Nicholson is poised to become only the second Australian in the ladies' class to hold aloft the prestigious green and gold WBC belt in the featherweight division this coming 6th of April when she takes on former IBF 126-pound champ Denmark's Sarah Mafood. On the undercard of Richardson Hitchens versus Gustavo Lemos's super lightweight IBF title eliminator in Las Vegas, USA. Nicholson will hope to not only equal the accomplishments of fellow countrywoman Sharon Wild Thing Anyos, who beat a far more experienced Marcela Acuna in 2005 to pick up the, at the time, vacant and inaugural belt, but Nicholson has high aspirations to surpass this and continue her journey to Undisputed, a sentiment and ambition shared by her upcoming rival. Let's get into it! Sky Nicholson is quickly becoming one of the more recognizable names in not just her division, but female boxing in general. Obviously, at featherweight, Amanda Serrano still reigns supreme as that division's queen and superstar. Names like Katie Taylor or Clarissa Shields are more familiar household names, but a vast crop of upcoming and already established female fighters are becoming more and more recognized and familiar to the average boxing punter as the ladies division continues to expand and grow in popularity. This is no more evident than in the case of 2020 Olympian and Commonwealth Games gold medalist Sky Nicholson. Sadly, her connection to her promoter Eddie Hearn has thrown some shade, or at least it has in recent times, on Nicholson's rise in the ranks and to the position she finds herself in today. Rumours, innuendo and the rest of it aside, fact or not, other people's private lives are none of my business, nor is it anyone else's. People are forgetting not only Nicholson's talent in the ring, but her talent at self-promotion also. Nicholson has worked out how to keep relevant by continuously calling out one of the most dangerous female fighters at and around 126 pounds. Nicholson has kept her name in boxing conversations and as a consequence has attached her name to that of Amanda Serrano. Whether many people think she can beat Serrano or if Serrano even sticks around in boxing is beside the point. It's Nicholson's self-belief that comes with the package in her self-promoting. Yes, the accomplished amateur has the backing of a boxing power broker, but it's centered around her skill and ability. Nicholson has grown as a fighter in her nine pro bouts. Starting off as purely a boxer with an amateur style, Nicholson is gradually becoming more comfortable holding her ground, exchanging on the inside and planting her feet when throwing shots. This was made evident in her last bout against Swede Lucy Wildheart. It was Nicholson's first stoppage win and Wildheart's first stoppage loss. This hardly makes Sky a boxer puncher, but the subtle changes are a contrast to her previous bouts. Sky is becoming a more rounded fighter, and I expect we'll see further improvements against Mafood. Sarah Mafood has been in the ring with some of the brightest and dangerous talent in and around the featherweight division. From fighters like Argentine Brenda Carabajal, the very experienced Marcela Acuna, who was almost knocking on 50 years of age when they met, Nina Menke and Amanda Serrano. It was to Serrano that Mafood would suffer her first and only loss as a pro. Mafood likes to stay light on her feet, pressing forward on her opponent but staying mindful of distance maintaining a relatively safe space to work from where she likes to spring in and out of danger. Mid-range is her sweet spot. From there, she likes to put short, quick combinations together before either springing back out of range or coming in to clinch if her opponent steps in to close the gap and engage Mafood on the inside. Typically, Mafood, through probing, feigning and pouring with her gloves out, is looking for a reaction from her opponent, something to counter with a collection of short burst punches to the head and body. An opportunistic puncher, for example, coming out of a clinch or break, Mafood will look to rough you up on the inside if she gets the opportunity. Sarah has a good right hand too, and will look to deliver that down the middle or overhand if she can, but against the southpaw, she'll be looking to find a home for it straight down the pipe. Both have faced either stances, so this won't be unfamiliar territory for either fighter. Whereas Nicholson is accustomed to fighting mid to long range and Mafood mid to close range, the slow transition in Nicholson's style means her style now, at least in parts of this fight I anticipate, will bring it closer to Mafood's style, which could deliver one of two outcomes. 
both spend considerable time circling each other during the fight, trying to get the other to react in order to counter. And we see a lot of pot shotting from the outside, or we see a lot of engagement back and forth, punctuated by clinching and some rough stuff on the inside. I think the latter will be the case. Neither fighter is known for their power, so we could see more inside fighting and action in this when you cancel out the threat of a concussive knockout. If I'm wrong, I'm happy to skinny dip in a grease trap, but I think with Sky Nicholson abandoning her Olympics aspirations and committing to pro boxing, we are seeing a gradual rounding out of her style. And with this emerging adaptability, we will see a more exciting pro style from Nicholson, which will make her better suited to the different styles of different fighters, in particular, the pressure and offense orientated styles of fighters like Amanda Serrano. I think Nicholson is quicker, sharper, and obviously younger than Mafood. They seem to be around the same height and reach, and Mafood has had the better opposition. But I think Nicholson does most things better than Mafood, and she'll be the home fighter, so if it's close, I expect she'll get the nod. I'm going with Sky Nicholson on points. Let us know in the comments below who you think wins and how. Thank you for watching Pound for Pound TV. Please remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell for future updates. See you in the next one. Check out our Patreon page to become a Patreon family member where you will receive some cool perks. If you're looking for some new threads, we've got t-shirts, hoodies, and much, much more. So head on over to our Michael A. Kobe Pound for Pound TV stores. They can be found on Redbubble and Spreadshop. Join me on my travels and head on over to my other YouTube channel titled Barefoot and Free. There you can find me as I traverse the many parts of our planet and occasionally get into a spot of bother. Nonetheless, it's always fun and entertaining. If you're struggling with some of life's obstacles and challenges, my book How to Get Out of Life Traps might just be the answer that you're looking for to help guide you through the difficult times. It's helped many get past some of their darkest moments and it might do the same for you. You can purchase it on Amazon where you can also find a wide range of my other works. Those works include screenplay to book adaptations, a fairly unique concept with genres covering comedy heist and revenge, drama, supernatural and crime, if that's more your cup of tea. You can find them by following the link provided.